You're watching NBC 16 News at 5.30. Governor Kate Brown has expanded vaccine eligibility to include all Oregonians age 16 and older starting April 19th. And we have team coverage tonight on the updated vaccine timeline. NBC 16's Angelina Dixon is joining us in the studio to discuss what role schools will play in the new rollout. But first, David Ochoa explains how local public health leaders feel about the accelerated timeline. David? Alan, public health officials in Lane and Douglas counties are excited about the expansion. They're ready to vaccinate more people and get that much closer to herd immunity. We think April 19th is a great time. We think almost everybody should be able to get vaccine now. Danhofer tells me speeding up the timeline won't change the vaccination plans in Douglas County. He says they have over 50 vaccinators in the county and they're all willing to help. We're planning to do big events every three weeks. So we did an event this weekend where we did over 1,200 doses. And we expect to do similar events every three weeks until we're done. Lane County will be able to go along with the new timeline, but it might not be all at once. We don't have enough of a sense of of consistency to be able to say for sure whether or not um, you know we'll be able to, to go forward in a way that would be able to offer a vaccine to absolutely everybody uh, you know within the first few weeks. Both counties reassured me no one would be jumped in line. People in previously eligible groups who haven't been vaccinated are still a priority. One of our focuses is really looking at uh, uh, those individuals who might slip through the cracks. Anyone from previous groups who've decided that they want to get the vaccine, anybody who's newly eligible, they're all welcome to come. Reporting in Douglas County, I'm David Ochoa. Now that new age group of anyone 16 and up will include much of Oregon's student population. So that means we'll bring in NBC 16's Angelina Dixon. She's been looking into the potential vaccination plans for those students. So Angelina, do the schools have anything worked out for the students quite yet? Well, Alan, in short, there's not a lot of information available after today's announcement from the governor. The 4J school district says they don't have vaccination plans at this time. Bethel and Springfield Public Schools were waiting to hear back. In the meantime, though, the University of Oregon Oregon says Autzen Stadium is open to anyone eligible who wishes to receive a vaccine. The university says it's happy to see the eligibility timeline moved up and is encouraging students and employees to get the shot as soon as they're able, whether that's through a mass vaccination clinic or pharmacy. Those clinics are happening at Autzen and the Lane County Fairgrounds. Now you must have an appointment to attend any mass vaccination clinic. You could schedule one on the Lane County website. Just look for the big button that says schedule a vaccine appointment. Thank you, Angelina. Well, according to a new poll, more than half of parents say they will probably get their children a COVID-19 vaccine. The Axios Ipsos poll was conducted April 2nd through April 5th. It found that 52% of moms and dads will get their kids vaccinated when a vaccine does become available for their age group. It also found that almost half of respondents said they had gotten at least one vaccine dose. Nationwide, President Biden is opening up vaccine eligibility two weeks earlier than initially expected. He says all adult, adults across the country will be able to get a vaccine as of April 19th. Many states have already opened up requirements, but Biden says it's time for the confusing rules and phases to go away. He highlighted the fact that the U.S. has reached 150 million vaccines and is on track to reach his new goal of 200 million by his 100th day in office, but there's still work to be done. Let me explain it in a single word, time, time. Even moving at the record speed we're moving at, we're not even halfway through vaccinating over 300 million Americans. Biden urged everyone to check in on elderly friends and family members to help them schedule a vaccination or arrange transportation. The White House announced today more than 28 million vaccine doses will be delivered to states this week, bringing the total over the past three weeks to more than 90 million doses. Meanwhile, Dr. Anthony Fauci says COVID-19 is spreading among children in team sports environments more than in classrooms. Today, Fauci said when you track cases in schools, they frequently come from sports. He explained that's because kids on sports teams are spending long periods of time together. Masks are also frequently not worn while playing sports. Fauci made the statement while discussing COVID variants that are now infecting younger people. Well, NBC 16 News has been investigating whether Oregon has seen a spike in youth COVID cases due to high school team sports. NBC 16's Hadley Heck joins us now in the studio with more information on the link between sports and youth cases. Hadley?
Alan, right now the answer is no, they're not directly linked. The executive director of the Oregon School Activities Association says raising youth cases aren't coming from sports themselves. Instead, they're likely coming from the activities that come along with high school sports. Peter Weber mentioned sleepovers or parties as some of the activities that may contribute to the rise in youth cases. Throughout this first season back, it's been a challenge to follow protocols with changing risk levels, but overall, the goal of returning to high school sports safely has remained consistent. We know there have been uh, situations in Oregon where schools have had to, uh, you know, shut down a program for, for a period of time. Um, but I don't think we're, we've seen any type of outbreak situation, um, at least significant outbreak situation in Oregon that we're aware of, uh, you know, that, that has come as a result of actually, you know, playing on the field or on the court. Over the past six weeks, a season two sports have been underway. That's football, volleyball, soccer, and cross country. This week marks the last week of the season. Looking ahead, OSAA will move forward with season th three sports, and that's baseball, softball, golf, tennis, and track. Competitions for that six week season start next week. Back to you. Thank you, Hadley. Well, Governor Brown announced new county risk levels today. Lane County could move back to moderate risk, but the county is given a two-week caution period until then. Six counties move back from moderate to high risk. Multnomah, Clackamas, Deschutes, Klamath, Lynn, and Tillamook counties all shifted to the high risk category. Overall, this means reduced capacity at businesses like gyms and restaurants. These risk levels go into effect on Friday. Meanwhile, Coos County is moving down a level from extreme to high risk for the state's COVID restrictions. NBC 16's Amanda Slee found out there is excitement about the change, but also concern over how long this will last. Coos County is moving from the most restrictive COVID risk level to the high risk category this Friday. The most notable change is the long awaited resumption of indoor dining. We're a little excited, a little eager to to get back to serving our guests the way that we normally do. Coos County has been in the extreme risk level longer than any county in Oregon and going through such a long period of tight restrictions has been a struggle. We have done everything that we could just to keep our doors open and and, uh, you know, we're still here. Now, anticipating a surge in customers, they're scrambling to hire employees. It happened last time we opened up, and I'm we're eager to uh, serve our guests and, and, and get them back to some sort of normalcy. Much like Front Street Provisioners, many other restaurants in Coos County are excited to resume indoor dining. But Coos Health and Wellness wants to remind people that the high-risk tier shouldn't be the county's goal. Our goal would be to continue to move and continue to do the things we need to do as a community um, by utilizing those preventative measures and move down to moderate and then low and then stay there. Gleason also suggests people should think about how to safely do what they want to do before doing it. Reporting in Coos County, I'm Amanda Slee. Last year, the pandemic really hit our on-premise business, including both of our pubs here in town. And we were closed for about five months of the year. Um, and it was, it was hard. Hop Valley is just one of many breweries that face the closures, job losses, and now the slow recovery from the coronavirus pandemic. Breweries and pubs had it worse than the broader food service industry, and that's according to data from the Oregon Employment Department that was released just last week. And the Oregon Brewers Guild says roughly 90% of draft sales were eliminated overnight last March due to the closures. NBC 16's Laura Negretti talks COVID-19's impact on local breweries. It's a story we've been hearing, the different ways the pandemic has impacted industries. And bars, breweries, and restaurants took a hit. The packed bars and unmasked customers, now a thing of the past. The biggest hit was on the draft, um, the draft side of things when, when things were closed. A struggle for Oakshire Brewing's tap rooms and wholesale to Pacific Northwest bars and restaurants. So we definitely took a big hit in specifically quarter two of, of 2020. Statewide, brews and pubs lost 3,500 jobs last spring, according to Oregon employment data. Cans and outdoor dining kept Oakshire pouring. At Hop Valley. So our restaurants um, definitely lost a lot of money and took a big hit um, this last year. And 
and restaurant and bar closures meant less time on drafts. You go to a bar, you try a beer, you're like, hey, that's awesome. And then you see it at grocery and you pick it up. And without having bars and restaurants for that sampling opportunity, we missed out on that new consumer. On the retail side, as of April 1st, Hop Valley's bubble stash is in all 50 states and Canada. We're launching nationally, so we were able to transition that growth and that excitement about our stash beers, which are brewed with these cryo hops, this innovative product. And Hop Valley seeing a boost from grocery and Costco sales. With progress in the vaccine rollout and summer weather on its way, there's hope for more people drinking Oregon beer. We definitely have hope and, and see a light at the end of the tunnel. In Eugene, I'm Lauren Negretti reporting. Coming up on your only local news at 530, the Minneapolis police lieutenant in charge of use of force training took the stand today in the Derek Chauvin murder trial. What he said during his testimony. And investigators are wrapping up their investigation following the mass shooting in Boulder two weeks ago. And another sunny day and a dry day across western Oregon as the number of days without rain continues to climb. Chief Meteorologist Josh Kozart explains what impacts that's had on our drought in his full forecast.